Hello and welcome to my channel. I hope you enjoy this story. I'm going to try and upload a new story each day. The Shadowed Sanctum of Old St. Helen's Church Holly Arnold had always been an adventurer at heart, her curiosity insatiable and her thirst for discovery unquenchable. Along with her three friends Sam, Lydia, and Ben she had explored countless abandoned places, each more eerie and enigmatic than the last. Their latest venture brought them to the Isle of Wight, a small island steeped in history, enshrouded in myth. They had come to investigate old St. Helena's church, a long-abandoned monastery said to harbour secrets darker than night itself. The journey to the church was treacherous, the narrow, winding roads almost impassable. Dense fog clung to the landscape, rendering visibility minimal. The church stood on a desolate hill, its crumbling structure silhouetted against a stormy sky. It was late afternoon when they arrived, the sun already sinking below the horizon, casting long, ominous shadows over the land. Are you sure about this, Holly? Lydia asked, her voice tinged with unease. She clutched her camera tightly, the only link she felt she had to the outside world. Holly nodded, her eyes alight with excitement. We've been through worse. Besides, this place has a fascinating history. It used to be a monastery before it was abandoned in the 18th century. There are rumors of dark rituals and forbidden practices. Imagine what we might find. Sam and Ben shared a look, both equally intrigued and apprehensive. Let's just get inside before it gets completely dark, Ben suggested, hoisting his backpack onto his shoulders. We can set up camp and explore more in the morning. The heavy wooden doors of the church creaked open, revealing a vast, shadowy interior. Dust motes danced in a weak beams of light that filtered through broken stained glass windows. The air was cold and musty, carrying the faint scent of decay. Gothic arches loomed overhead, and long-forgotten pews lay in disarray. This place is incredible, Sam murmured, his voice echoing in the cavernous space. He pulled out a flashlight and swept its beam across the room, revealing faded murals and intricate carvings. As they ventured deeper into the church, they discovered a hidden staircase leading down into the bowels of the building. The steps were narrow and uneven, the darkness below impenetrable. Looks like there's a crypt or basement, Holly observed, her heart pounding with anticipation. Let's check it out. The descent was slow and cautious, the air growing colder and more oppressive with each step. At the bottom, they found themselves in a labyrinth of stone corridors, the walls lined with ancient, rusted sconces. The silence was thick, almost tangible, as if the very stones were holding their breath. Something feels off, Lydia whispered, her voice barely audible. Like we're not alone, nerves, Ben replied, though he didn't sound convinced. Come on, let's find a good spot to set up camp. They chose a small, secluded chamber, its walls adorned with faded tapestries depicting scenes of monks in prayer. As they unpacked their gear and settled in, Holly noticed strange symbols etched into the stone floor, almost invisible in the dim light. Look at this, she called to the others, tracing the markings with her fingers. These symbols... They look like some kind of ritualistic runes. Lydia snapped a few photos, her camera's flash illuminating the room for brief moments. Maybe this place really was used for dark rituals. Night fell quickly, and an unsettling stillness enveloped the monastery. The wind howled outside, making the old structure groan and creak. As they huddled together, their conversation turned to the history of the church. Legend has it, Holly began, her voice barely a whisper, that the monks here were involved in something sinister. People from nearby villages would disappear, and it was said that the monks were conducting human sacrifices to summon dark entities. Great bedtime story, Holly, Sam said with a nervous laugh. Thanks for that, a sudden, loud bang echoed through the corridors, making them all jump. What the hell was that? Ben exclaimed, grabbing a flashlight. Probably just the wind, Holly said, though her own heart raced. Let's check it out. They ventured out into the darkened hallways, their flashlights casting eerie shadows on the walls. The source of the noise seemed to be coming from the main chamber of the church. As they approached, they heard a low, guttural chanting. Do you hear that? Lydia whispered, her eyes wide with fear. It's coming from up ahead. Cautiously, they moved towards the sound. The chanting grew louder, more insistent, filling the air with a palpable sense of dread. When they reached the main chamber, they froze in horror. 
A figure stood at the altar, draped in a tattered monk's robe, its face obscured by a hood. The chanting ceased abruptly as the figure turned towards them, revealing hollow, empty eye sockets and a mouth twisted into a grotesque grin. Welcome, travelers, the figure rasped, its voice echoing unnaturally. You have come to witness the sanctum's true purpose. Panic surged through them, but their feet felt rooted to the spot. The figure raised its arms, and the symbols on the floor began to glow with an eerie, pulsating light. We must leave now. Then shouted, but the door behind them slammed shut with a deafening bang, trapping them inside. The figure began to chant once more the words for an malevolent. The ground beneath them trembled, and shadows seemed to come alive, swirling and writhing around them. Holly felt a cold hand grip her wrist, and she turned to see Lydia, her eyes wide with terror. Holly, do something. Desperation fuels Holly's actions. She lunged towards the altar, knocking over a candlestick in the process. The candle rolled across the floor, igniting one of the tapestries. Flames spread quickly, casting flickering light and deep shadows. The figure screamed, a sound that was both human and inhuman. The glowing symbols faded, and the shadows receded. The door behind them burst open, and they ran, stumbling over debris in their haste. They didn't stop until they were outside, gasping for breath in the cold night air. The church stood silent and foreboding behind them, the firelight flickering through the windows. We need to get out of here, Sam panted, his face pale. Now, they hurried back to their car, not daring to look back. As they sped away from the hill, Holly glanced in the rearview mirror. The church stood silhouetted against the night sky, a dark sentinel guarding its secrets. Days later, back in the safety of their homes, they tried to make sense of what had happened. Lydia developed her photos, but the images of the figure at the altar were blurred and distorted, as if the camera itself had been repelled by the sight. Holly couldn't shake the feeling that they had barely escaped with their lives. The shadowed sanctum of old St. Helen's Church was a place of darkness, its malevolent presence lingering in her thoughts. As she lay in bed one night, trying to forget the horrors they had witnessed, she heard a faint, guttural chanting outside her window. Her blood ran cold, and she knew the darkest had followed them home. Holly sat up in bed, her heart pounding in her chest. The chanting was faint but unmistakable, a haunting echo of the horror they had left behind at old St. Helen's Church. She rushed to the window, peering into the darkness, but saw nothing out of the ordinary. The street was empty, the night silent save for the rustling of leaves in the wind. She closed the window and backed away, her mind racing. Could it have been her imagination? The events at the church had left her shaken, her nerves frayed. She tried to convince herself it was just a lingering echo of her fear, but the sound had felt all too real. The next morning, Holly called her friends. We need to talk, she said, her voice urgent. Something happened last night. They agreed to meet at a cafe, hoping the public setting would provide a sense of security. Holly arrived first, her thoughts in turmoil. When the others joined her, she could see the same haunted look in their eyes. What's going on? Then asked, his voice dense. Why did you want to meet? Holly took a deep breath. Last night I heard the chanting, the same chanting we heard at the church. Lydia's face went pale. I heard it too, she whispered. I thought I was going crazy, Sam nodded, his expression grim. Me too. It woke me up around midnight. I checked everywhere, but I couldn't find the source. Ben looked around the table, his worry evident. This can't be a coincidence. Something followed us, Holly nodded. We need to figure out what it is and how to stop it. We can't let it continue to haunt us. They spent the rest of the day researching the history of old St. Helen's Church, combing through old records and local legends. The deeper they delved, the more they uncovered about the monastery's dark past. The monks had indeed practiced forbidden rituals, summoning dark entities from beyond. The church had been abandoned after a series of mysterious deaths, but the evil presence had never truly left. One name kept appearing in their research, Father Matthias, the leader of the dark rituals. According to legend, he had been the one to open the door to the other side, allowing the darkness to seep into their world. His final act was a ritual so powerful it bound the evil to the church forever. But there were hints of a way to endure the binding a ritual of banishment that had never been completed. 
We need to go back, Holly said, her voice steady despite her fear. We need to finish the ritual and banish whatever is haunting us, the others agree, though the thought of returning to the church filled them with dread. They gathered the necessary items for the ritual, a mix of ancient herbs, candles, and a book of incantations they had found in a dusty corner of the local library. As night fell, they made their way back to the Isle of Wight, the oppressive sense of dread growing with each passing mile. The church loomed ahead, a dark silhouette against the night sky. They parked the car and approached the entrance, the heavy doors creaking open as if welcoming them back. Inside, the air was thick with the same musty scent and a palpable sense of malice. They made their way to the main chamber, where they had encountered the figure. Holly laid out the items for the ritual, her hand shaking slightly. We need to stay focused, she said, lighting the candles and arranging them in a circle. No matter what happens, we have to see this through. As they began the incantation, the temperature dropped sharply, and the shadows seemed to deepen. The air grew heavy, pressing down on them as they chanted the ancient words. The symbols on the floor began to glow once more, but this time, Polly felt a sense of control. The figure appeared again, its hollow eyes and twisted grin sending chills down their spines. It moved towards them, but this time, they were ready. Holly held up the book of incantations, her voice growing louder and more confident. The figure hesitated, its form flickering as if caught between two worlds. Be gone, dark presence. Holly shouted the final words of the ritual echoing through the chamber. Return to the void from whence you came. A blinding light filled the room, and the figure let out a terrible scream, its form disintegrating into shadows that were sucked into the glowing symbols on the floor. The light intensified, then abruptly vanished, leaving them in darkness and silence. The oppressive weight lifted, and the air felt clean and fresh for the first time. Holly and her friends collapsed, exhausted but relieved. They had done it. They had banished the evil presence from Old St. Helen's Church. As they made their way back to the car, the first light of dawn broke over the horizon, casting a warm glow over the landscape. They drove home in silence, each lost in their thoughts, but with a sense of peace that had been absent for too long. In the days that followed, the haunting ceased. The chanting was gone, and they were able to sleep soundly once more. Holly knew they had been lucky to escape with their lives, but the experience had changed them all. They had faced the darkness, and won, but the memory of old St. Helen's Church would stay with them forever and in a small corner of her mind, Holly couldn't shake the feeling that the shadows were still watching, waiting for another chance to return. Thank you for listening, I hope you enjoyed this story. Please don't forget to like and even better like and subscribe. Thank you very much and I hope you have had or have a great day.